Okay ladies and gents, just a quick little video. I'm just going to show you the different current waveforms between um, some incandescent lights and a highly inductive discharge light. So here's the apparatus, power strip connected to the current monitor, HRD lamp here, and some incandescent lamps here. And I've got a total of about 180 watts of incandescent lights connected, and uh, that's a 150 watt nominal. Um, discharge lamp, and we're just going to. I'm now going to disconnect the um, filament lamps and start up the discharge lamp. So here we go, unplug them all. And start up the discharge lamp. Okay, let's have a look, see what we've got. So let's take a look at the waveforms for the incandescent lamps. So voltage waveform at the top, reasonable sine wave, just slightly flattened at the tops and at the troughs. Current waveform in the middle here, and power waveform at the bottom. The red in this case is the instantaneous power. It's obtained by multiplying the instantaneous voltage at each point by the instantaneous current at each point. So here we have positive current, positive voltage, positive power, zero voltage, zero current, zero power fairly straightforward. The green line in this case is a smoothed version of the red line showing an absolutely flat power consumption and in this case about 175 watts. Um, so fairly straightforward. You, this in effect, the power curve is in effect a sine wave at 100 Hz as opposed to 50 Hz which is the main AC supply and it just touches, just kisses the zero power when the voltage is zero. So zero volts, zero amps, zero watts. Makes sense. You just get a little bit of a flat top at the peaks corresponding to the slight distortion in the voltage and the current waveforms. Not too surprising. Interestingly, the current waveform has a slightly downsloping dip, whereas the voltage waveform has a slightly upsloping peak. Whether that's relevant, I don't know. It may well just be the current transformer that I'm using as a current sensor distorting a little bit, which is one of the problems you have with current transformers. At low currents, they do distort and they do cause some inaccuracies. Um, so for low currents, you know, when you're measuring, you know, a few watts or, uh, you, know, or, or you know, something like in at home, it's best that you don't use a current transformer. And of course, current transformers are expensive, so regular household electrometers use a large resistor to uh, measure the current but that is not suitable for industrial use. I'm using a current transformer for safety purposes. Okay so how does the discharge lamp differ? These are the waveforms for the discharge lamp. Voltage as you can see is exactly the same. Current is a lot lot higher. This is a much bigger scale graph and you can see here the current in this case about 2.3 amps compared to 0.7 for the uh, incandescent lamps. But the other thing you'll notice is that the watts are much lower, 96 watts. So how can that be? How can the watts be one half while the amps are three times as much? Well, this is how. Look at the power curve and what, what do you notice about this? Well, the fact is the power curve is going down below zero. We're, going, we're getting a negative watt reading here negative about 450 watts here. So what does that mean? Well, a posi positive watts mean energy being transferred from the grid into the load. In the case of my incandescent lamps, energy was being transferred from the grid into the filament. So negative power means energy is being transferred from my light back into the grid. So wh what in effect is happening is the lamp ballast, the magnetic ballast, is taking more power than it needs, storing it, then going, oh, oops, I've taken too much energy, and dumping it back into the grid over the next half cycle. So you have a lot of amps shuffling energy backwards and forwards in and out of the ballast, and back, into, back in and out of the grid. But actually, of course, that's not actually doing anything useful. It's just heating up the wires, lowering your voltage, um, and just causing problems, putting load on your switches, circuit breakers and fuses. Um, and so the fact that we're actually only getting 96 useful watts 
out of 544 volts times amps, so 237 times uh, 2.29 is 544. So we're only getting 96 watts out of 544 volts times amps or volt amps. This what we're saying is that power factor is 0.18. So only so 96. Um, sorry, 544 divided by sorry multiplied by 0.18 gives 96. In other words, we're getting a very low power transfer from the grid into the lamp, and that's a result of the very high inductance. Thankfully it's not quite as bad uh, because once the lamp warms up the amps drop down and the power factor improves. This is what it looks like once the lamp is actually fully up to temperature. You can see the, the watts have come up, the currents, the amps have gone down. If you look at this you'll see that in here the uh, peak of the current waveform is about three quarters of the way through this grid square, whereas at start up the uh, phase angle was a lot more. Here you can see that the peak of the current waveform is delayed almost to this grid line, almost to 90 degrees of phase shift. So very poor power transfer with this large amount of lag between the, pa the current and the voltage. As the lamp warms up the lag decreases here, as you can see, and so you get less power, negative power, and higher average power. So that's power factor, and as you can see, power factor is now 0.38. And if we go back to the incandescent lamps, you can see the power factor is 1, indicating that the watts and the volt amps are pretty much identical. And in fact, the only things we've got here the volt amps reactive, which is a measure of the inductance or capacitance, is basically measurement noise. This is literally a rounding error um, and is basically zero. So there we go. That's a little bit about power factor.